Well, hello there. A few weeks ago, I showed you this Hoover Junior High Power Compact U2128 in one of my videos. I think it was the video that had the Royal Warrant machine in it. And I pointed out that the bellows had failed. So as you can see here, we have a huge great lump of tape um, trying to hide a hole, which is not working at all. And um, one of my dear, dear viewers said, oh, there's a bellows for one of those on, on eBay. This, this is a two section bellows. There's two sections to it. It's quite long. It runs quite a way up the machine's body. Um, and yeah, they said, oh, there's a lower bellows on eBay. So here it is. I bought it. So that's great. Um, this one is very much like the one that's on the Royal Warrant Cleaner. It's this uh, sort of off-white colour, not beige like the original one. Um, so in this video, I thought we'd have a go at getting this new video on the High Power Compact. So let's give it a try. <laughs> everything gets smashed up in the workshop I think we should um, crack on with it because I think things are going to go mental um, and we're going to have problems so let's remove the bag door now what we've got to do is get to the bellows here so this is the top section of the bellows and obviously the bottom section is down here so what we've got to do is we've got to remove all of this stuff um, it's a bit of a pain in the bum frankly so yeah, we need to get rid of all of this so we can get the bellows out, unhook it this end, and then we can pull it through underneath and we'll see what we've got. So I'm gonna move you down and um, we're gonna take out all of this. Now honestly, this isn't really a hard job. I wouldn't say it's particularly difficult. It's just a bit fiddly because of how this um, um, latch is, is in place here. So we need to undo a couple of screws up here remove the back door latch like so. And now we need to get underneath here because what's happening is that the screws are hidden under this panel. Um, and they're actually, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's, they're actually here. So you've got to very carefully open this up like so. You can take this out, but honestly, it's just much easier to, to do it this way. And then take that white latch out when the whole thing is out of out of the dust box. It's just so, so much easier. Let's do it like that. There we go. And then we can get the screw that's behind there. Come on. This job is so much easier on a non-high power compact junior. It really is. This is just a massive faff. And it's very rare for the bellows to fail on a normal junior, but they seem to do it quite often on, on the high power compact. Um, I think there's maybe more pressure put on the bellows. It's more sort of uh, under under pressure, I suppose, is the best way of how it's actually fitted to the machine. So then we can take this panel off like so. And um, if I turn it over. Kind of need to get these screws out. I don't know if they're, they're not captive, but they might stay. Well, that one come out. Oh, God, this one doesn't even want to come out. Look at that. There we go. Okay, so now we can remove this white uh, latch. So you push down on the plastic and just pull it through. Or if, if you're doing this yourself, be very careful because this can break. This this white piece of plastic is not particularly strong. So there we go, that's all those bits out. And now we can remove the bag throat. So that just pulls away like so. And now if I move you down a bit, let's find a good position for you. There we go. You can see the top of the bellows is here. So we can now push this through the body. So that gets pushed through like so. And now we should be able to move the drill out of the way. Drag this down a bit unhook the bellows from this point here, like so. So that's that adapter plate. And then we can pull the bellows unit out of the hoover. And there we go. So this is our original bellows. So now we need to have a look at this and see how we change this bottom piece. 
because that's the only bit we're changing this bottom piece here this there's a solid section here if I just bring up this one you'll see so that's the bit that we're changing this one this new one is actually slightly longer than the old one is which is quite interesting but uh, yeah we need to change the camera now and uh, actually take everything out of this one and put it onto this one with the junior out of the way we can see what what we're faced with here so what we need to do first of all is take this top section off because we're going to reuse that so that just comes off really quite easily like so and that will go on to our replacement bellows then we have the old um, oh look at all the muck in there look at the muck in there look at that ah, see that was that was building up at the point where the bellows is split you see the the hole the, the hole there that muck was starting to build up on the hole it's not ideal no i suppose it was kind of blocking it and preventing any more going through so that's a bonus now we take off this um cable tie and we can remove this foot section I, I call it a foot section I don't know why perhaps I'm, because I'm just used to it and then we can get this out of the old bellows like so it's quite big actually this is quite a large chunk of plastic come on there we go it's sort of coming oh, dearie me this is actually larger on this one than it is on the other juniors, the normal soft bag juniors. It's quite a large, chunky piece of plastic. It's pretty big. I don't know, you can see all the dirt that was building up in there. It's quite a lot. Let's smack that off. Let's just clean up this. That Mila is not sounding. Whoa! My goodness me, that Mila is not sounding any better as time goes by. <laughs> Deary me. Okay, now we need to get this sort of shoe bit in to our new bellows, like so. Get a pair of pliers and get it in like that. But be careful not to tear it because this is, whilst this is more flexible, which is great. It's not as strong as the original uh, moulding. Um, it's just it's just like a slightly weaker kind of rubber. It's not rubber. It's a pliable plastic, really. So then we can just get that like so, and that is in the right position there. So you see that latch can move at that point. So that's that in place, which is lovely. Now we need a cable tie. Now, I just think to myself, which way is this orientated? It's going to be like that. So we kind of want the... I kind of want this... Mm, I'm kind of tempted to put it up the front there. I think that should be all right. I do it like that, I think. Or is there enough space? No, do you know what? I'm going to bottle it and I'm going to do it on this side. Because that is on the outside of the cleaner. So let's put it here. that on, do up the cable tight, make sure that's nice and tight, snip off the excess, there we go, so that's the bottom section done, and now we need to get this on here, which shouldn't be troublesome, he says, hoping, um, pliers again, just going to have to pull this over, get it on like that, it's not, the, not super easy, I should be able to do it. I don't think there's any trick to it. I think you've just got to do it, if you know what I mean. Okay, if I try and hold it like that. This is one of those times where you need three hands. Mm. Come on. Let's see. Let me get that on now. Come on. Almost there. Almost there. Come on. There's one final pull. Ah, oh, flipping heck. Let's work it over. Work it, work it. Come on. Oh, you can see the difference how stiff this original plastic is. It's really fighting. It just does not want to go on. But it will. It will go on. 
Do you know what? I think I've just thought of something. What would make this much easier? If I had the presence of mind to do it, would be to leave this original section in some hot water for a while, and that would have softened it up and made it much more pliable. But as it is, it's okay. It's on. It's not. This is not an original Hoover part. This is a pattern part, um, and because of that, it's ever so slightly different to what the original one is. You can see that there's quite a distinct bulge around the side where this has been put on and it's kind of not straight it doesn't really matter because it, it can rotate slightly within within the body so it's fine but yeah it's just not it's not original hoover quality sadly but that's on now so that's good and i can just pull this down a little bit i've got to be careful because i don't want to break this one I'm going to have to get a new top section as well. It's nice to keep the machine as, as original as it possibly is. Um, that's popped in again. So that's, that's my OCD there, that little bit. There we go. Okay, so I think we'll pop that back in the machine. Um, and we should be good. We should be good. Let me just see if I can bring this round ever so slightly. But yeah, top tip there. If you ever need to do this, make sure you heat this original section up because it will be so much easier to do if that's a, a bit more pliable it will be so much easier that's going to go in the bin like so and now i'll bring the hpc back up on the bench and we can get this back inside whilst we're here i'm just going to take the opportunity to sort this flex out because this is not in the right place so let's just pull that through and get it to where it really should be. Always be careful when you're doing this, be careful not to put any strain on the back body because they will break. They just break. Um, and you really don't want to be in a situation where you need a new back body because you are absolutely screwed if you do. It ain't gonna happen, I'm afraid. So I just need to pull that through a little bit. Push that over. And I think that's about right. So there we go. So that flex, the, the power flex that comes through the back is, is in the right position. Um, I think I might just give this a little vacuum out whilst we're here. Where is my paintbrush? Really not sorted at all. There we go. Just, just vacuum this out a little bit to make it a bit cleaner. <laughs> Okay, that's better, good. So now we need to get the bellows back up inside. So we push it in up here, and then we can pull it through the top. Again, be really careful with the back body. Don't put any pressure on it at all. Slightly tricky to get this through. There we go, that's right. And now this bit can go back on so we can reattach that. Um, I'll tell you what, let's do that now. I'll just bring it around a little bit so you can see. So we pop this on, slot over, and there we go. So that's our bellows fitted. And that's fine. That works lovely. Now, obviously, you can see that it's not an original bellows. Uh, does it really make any difference? Probably not. I mean, the machine is actually usable now. It wasn't previously. You couldn't use it as it was. It would just blow dust everywhere. So that's good. Now we need to sort out this bit. So we put the bag throat back in. I'm just going to give this a quick wipe. It's quite dusty. Pop the uh, bag throat in. Make sure that is in properly to the top of the bellows. This is a bit tricky. You've got to get it in the right position. For it to slot in. 
And this is slightly harder because the top of the bellows has rotated slightly, so it's not the same kind of shape as the throat originally was, but that is in now, so that's good. So that's all lined up nicely, and then we can take this panel and pop it on here. Like so, just line up the screw holes, there we go. Um, where's my screws gone? There they are. Let's get the screws out. Pop the bottom one in first, because that holds everything in place. Again, be careful with the amount of pressure you're putting down on the back body. Now that's interesting, that screw is not actually screwing in properly. I think the post is worn. You can just see the post there. I think the threads are wearing out on it, which is a shame. I suspect somebody's been in here before. I may put these screws in. They are quite tight, actually. Those posts are okay. Just get them on the back body. There we go. And now we can put the bag door latch back on. So we don't put this in, and our bag door won't stay shut. That's not ideal. I'm going to line these up, do a little bit of one, and then do the other one, because you can move it around. It makes it much, much easier. And just screw that back into place. There we go. Be careful with, yeah, see, the plastic's getting very weak. I mean, this machine is what? What is this 1981 this was, wasn't it? Uh, no, yes, that's right, yes, yes, it's manufactured d December 1980. So we're dealing with 40 year old plastics and it's not, you've got to be so careful. Now we put our bag latch back in. And that literally just pops in like that. That's really easy, really easy going back in. Bit of a pain in the bum coming out. Now I heard from my friend John that you can actually fit um, pneumatic HEPA flow bags to these cleaners. So I'm just going to find one and I will try it. Here we go, here's our massive um, pneumatic HEPA flow dust bag. Um, and I think, if I remember how John did it, I'm just trying to remember. We do it like that or like that. I think he did it this way, because it kind of folds down in there, and then you can line it up, and then it goes in on the top, something like this. I'm not sure how he did it. It's kind of like that. Did he maybe s snip this down? It won't go in that way because it won't hold on the on the bag holder. No, it's got to be like this, isn't it? I think the first thing we need to do is to get rid of this tab. All the tools are going to go everywhere now. So let's cut this tab off. Oops. There we go. Get rid of that. I'm sure he had it this way, so it must go something like this. Actually, let's try it that way. It'd be better to do it like that. So they go down there. Hmm, it's just almost too much, isn't it? It's sort of too much, but I don't quite know how to do it. Oh, this is a pain of the bum. I just feel, I'm just gonna feel where that opening is. It's kind of like that, isn't it? And then, see that's almost right. It must have been that way. Yeah, because it's pushing through. It is actually pushing through. That opening is fine. That will do it. So we kind of need to trim this down a little bit. I we may ruin this bag, but We'll give it a go. It's kind of like there. Let's have a look. Cool. 
we could do this. We just take it off like so. I mean, this bag can still be used in the Henry anyway, so it's fine, it doesn't really matter. And it can be used on other cleaners. So if we ruin it, it's not really ruined, if you, if you see what I mean. Oh, goodness, I cannot get through this plastic. Oh, come on. There we go. Got it. Let's try it like that. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's pretty good. That feels pretty good. Just kind of thinking, is that enough? Yeah, almost. It's almost there. Just need to, I think maybe we just take um, these bits off. If you do it like that, will that work? It's really hard to see. Oh, that might have done it. Yeah, I think that's actually done it, guys. I think I can feel the the aperture. 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 <laughs> The, the end of the bag throat through that. I think that's actually worked. I tell you what, what we'll do is we'll plug it in. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Let's turn it on because everything's everything's in place. Right, you ready? Yeah, amazingly, that is actually working. The thing is, though, you've got to have it folded over like that, haven't you? So really, you haven't got a huge amount of dust bag to use because it's not going to fill. Mm, I think there's a there's a definite downside to this. I mean, it does kind of work. You can see that the bag is in place, but really, is it is it better than a paper bag? From a filtration point of view, I suppose it is, but. From a dust, uh, dirt filling perspective, not really. Let's just turn that on again. I mean, that is working really well you know I'm not going to argue with that it is it is working but it'll be interesting to see exactly how much dirt this can take because I don't think it's very much when it's folded like that you're basically losing half the bag so yeah I'm not sure I call that a success unless I've done it wrong unless it should be orientated the other way around so the bag is, is like falling downwards uh, I don't know I'm not I'm not convinced of that. I'm really not convinced. I mean, I, I always say, if you can get away with not using paper, don't use paper. But in this instance, I'm not sure. Well, anyway, okay, let's uh, move you back round. Well, there we go. We've uh, fitted the new bellows to our high power compact. I am very pleased with that. I think that was uh, nine pounds posted, which is pretty good. I mean, I've, you know, you can't moan at that. Maybe should have used a light coloured um, cable tie on it. I could have orientated the end of the cable tie here to the top top of it, but I didn't because uh, I bottled it and I wasn't sure it would fit. Um, the machine works really well. It's got some stuff here on the... that is shifting a nice load of air that they you know there's no doubt about that it's it's working really well it sounds quite good too i'm quite pleased with how that sounds um i'm not 
overly convinced about that Hepaflow bag, I've got to say. I'm just a little bit... Because mm, you're not getting a great deal. I mean, effectively, that's what you've got to use. That's it. You've, you've lost all of this here. I think probably the best way to do that is to fit maybe a Turbo Power 2 high filtration bag. That's probably the, the best course of action. Um, if you could right, rotate this so it was hanging down that way, that would be much better, much, much better. Like this, it's, not, it's just not ideal. Having it all folded up like this, just, yeah, not, not super convinced about that. And it almost gets in the way of the flipping um, latch mechanism too. So, yeah, I think what I might do is use this cleaner for a while and actually do my vacuuming with it and, and see what happens with the bag. You know, it might work, it, it might be okay. You've got to be really careful with this one because uh, it's got the lower cord hook still in place, which is a minor miracle. That is an absolute miracle to see. So there we go, our 2128 normal non-royal edition of the High Power Compact is working well, working good. Nice to nice to see, nice to use, all good stuff. So um, I'm going to leave you there. That's it for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to do the usual, uh, commenting, subscribing and liking. Uh, I've just realised we've had two videos in the workshop in a row. I have got two more vacuum cleaners that I need to do workshop videos on, so we'll see them soon, hopefully. Um, I bought another Hoover cylinder from my friend Thomas. He is in the process of posting that right now. So when that comes, we'll do an unboxing video. It's a machine I don't currently have. Uh, he kind of sold it as um, spares or repairs, and it was one that I was going to use to fix an, a, another machine. But I think I'll actually keep it and do it up. So we'll do a, a workshop se session on that. Um, I was gonna. I bought it to save another machine, so that means that machine is not now not savable. So it's all getting very confusing. I don't know. Uh, too many flipping vacuum cleaners. But anyway, that's enough waffling. Um, see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.